This video is to demonstrate the division of Drinking Groundwater's PWS LTO drop application. So it's developed as an online application for public water systems, owners, or administrative contacts to update water system information and to report the required drop metrics. The, the application allows users to update phone numbers, email addresses, mailing addresses for owners, administrative, and financial contacts and to enter the required drop metrics information. In addition to the contact information, users can also update water system population, service connections, operating seasons if they're not open throughout the entire year. Also allows owners to generate a PWS operator of record notification form that you can print for signatures if you're updating any of the operators of record in the PWS. The application is accessed through the agency's customer support center, and a link to this site can be found either under the LTO tab of the PWS webpage or under the Do Business link on every Ohio EPA webpage. So applicants have been sent a login associated with their water systems, and the first step was to reset the password for the account. I have, there's a previous video that, that goes through all of those steps. Once you've reset the password and logged into the application, your water system will be displayed and a link to revise that information. If you did not receive a username, um, please contact Brian Tarver or Sean Stevenson at the Division of Drinking and Groundwaters. So in order to complete this the, the PWS LTO drop application, the following information you'll need to, to have ahead of time is your population serves, your service connections, all of your contact information for the owner, the financial contact, and the administrative contact, and that includes names, addresses, phone numbers, and emails when required. Certified operators can be updated. If you're updating those, you will need a, their name, their certification number, and their expiration date for their certification. You also want to complete the drop application form so you can have your metrics information ready to go. So when I go to the customer support center, I get to the login, I, I get to the customer support center here. I want to select the login and I, we sent you the username and hopefully you've gone through and reset your password already. So let me enter that. And log in. And the first time you come in, you'll, you'll come in to uh, your account information. So you'll, you'll, you'll come in to actually this information where you can update your, your information and save the changes. And then you'll want to make sure to get to the drop, the, the LTO drop application, you need to go to the account link up here in the top right. So if I click the account link, it will list all of my water systems that I'm associated with. And more than likely, you're just going to have one. We have some people that, that do manage a lot of water systems. But you'll want to come over to the action over here. You don't want to click the link where it actually says the, the LTO drop application. You want to select the revise link. And when I select that, it will take me to here. And this is our, our application. And the first page here is instructions, kind of tells you about the navigating navigating through the application where um, through each step you'll you'll select the next button there's also a back button on most pages if you if you need to go back and, and correct something so I'm going to select next and this is my contact information and I can update this as I need um, 
make make sure it's current current and accurate and I will select next this is a important page that wasn't in last year's the PWS activity question and this is asking whether the the water system was active the previous year and this is for the drop metrics information because that's all based on the previous year's activity not this year's activity so if i if i was active last year i want to select yes and go to next and this is service connections the information, the, the basic information here at the top is not editable. It's just uh, for your information on what we have on your water system. Down here is the number of service connections. So I can update the number of service connections. So I will change that. And I cannot change the type of connections. I can only change the number of service connections and select next. And this is seasons and populations. The season information is for systems that are not open year round. Most of the systems, most of you all will, will be open from January 1st to 1231 every year. There are campgrounds and seasonal systems that do need to update their begin day or end day for the, the next year's season. Population, I can update that. I can't update the type of population, but I can update the number of people using the, the water system. Then I will select next. And this is the PWS contact information. There should always be at least three contacts an owner, a financial contact, and a administrative contact. So I'm going to scroll down through here and see if all my information is here. The owner contact, I have the same person as the administrative and financial contact. And that information, I can edit the address and phone numbers and email. I cannot change the name. If I need to change a name, or a company name, I'll have to remove it and create a new one. And I'll show you how to do that here on the next page. So I'm gonna review all this. Um, my owner contact here, I can update the phone numbers, the email, and I'm gonna come back up here and my administrative contact needs to be replaced. So I'm gonna check this checkbox that says replace this contact. And it will, on the following page, have all the information for that I need to add for a new administrative contact. So I'm going to scroll back up here to the top and select Next. And it has the administrative contact, and I filled in my, my name and my company address, my phone numbers, um, and email address. If any of these are not filled out, it will stop you and tell you to, that, that you need to, to complete that information. So I'm gonna, I've, I've added my new administrative contact information. I'm going to select Next. And it's going to come to the operators. Now this system has a, treat, a, a treatment plant and a distribution. So I'm going to scroll down through here and I see I have one here. I have uh, three operators for the for the water treatment plant, and I'm going to come down here in my distribution. I have two operators for that. Those are fine. I'm going to add another operator because I have a new one. If one of these no longer works there, I can check to remove them. Um, just note that if you remove all of your operators, it will require you to add a new operator. But I just need to add another one because I have somebody else working here. So I'm going to click Next and type in the, the operator's first and last name. Um, if I'm adding more than one operator, I will select this add another operator, but otherwise it's just, it's asking for the, the one that I am adding. So I hit next and it wants the certificate number. 
So you want to make sure that it fits the format um, listed below. You need the type, their core ID, and their the year, and their expiration date. So I will hit next, and I have added a new operator. Now here's where we come into the metrics. Um, this is the there is a link on just about every page to bring you to the drop worksheet if you haven't already filled that out. Um, but I will select that I've reviewed and understand these metric rules and click next. And the first question here, water system expenses. I type the, my, my expenses. I can choose that they are actual or estimate. I can make any comments I want on that. If I have, uh, so, so if there's anything that you think we need to, to know about your water system expenses, and I will hit next. And from here, it's uh, once the total water system revenue, and I type that in, I can indicate whether it's actual estimate. Again, I can also have comments. Since I had already typed in the number, it is going to give me my operating ratio up here. That, that's calculated as soon as you enter uh, a number in your revenue here. Many, many of the pages here on, the, on the, the drop metrics will have this show height examples. If I check the show height examples, it will uh, expand and give me a little bit more information on on what I uh, what this page is asking for. Once I've entered, I will hit next. Number of service connections. I will enter the service connections, and this is also all the metrics information is for the previous year. So this will be uh, last year's service connections. I'll enter that. It's either actual or estimate. Again, I can show and hide examples and hit next. Water line breaks. So I need the number of total number of distribution water line breaks. And this, I, I, I didn't mention this is a community system. The non-community systems will have a different set of metrics questions. And I will hit next and it's total length of distribution pipe, and I can choose, I, I enter my number, I can choose either miles or feet, and again, whether it's actual or estimate. Hit next, total amount of billed water exported, and I can uh, select whether this is in gallons or MG for million gallons, and actual and estimate. Build metered consumption, same thing. I can enter the, the total amount of build metered consumption and again, select whether it's in gallons or millions of gallons. Once again, there's, whenever this show height examples is here, I can uh, select that. It will expand and give a little bit more information. Um, there's a link on many of these pages that will will open a web page for additional information. I, I believe this will open to this more information will open to the drop worksheet. Next, and this is unmetered consumption. In, in order to determine how you calculate or know your unmetered consumption, a number of questions get asked. So I can select, do I have any build unmetered consumption? If I select no, it's going to move to the next page and I will enter zero. If I select yes, I need to determine how I know my build unmetered consumption. Um, if I say yes, I, I have meter data, it will ask me to enter the, the, the actual meter data that I have. If I select no, I need to determine how to calculate it. So right, right now, saying, do, you, do you know the population? To calculate, I either need to know the population or service connections associated with the build unmetered 
water. So if I hit yes, I know the population. I can make the calculation for, for the unmetered consumption based on population. So I'm going to hit next. And it's asking me to enter my unmetered population. So I put in the, the, the population associated with that and select estimate and it will calculate based on that population how much unmetered consumption I have. Select next and water produced. Pretty straightforward. I can choose millions of gallons, actual or estimate. Planned repairs, number of planned repairs for, for the previous year. And again, actual or estimate. Number of unplanned repairs. And each system has to do the, an individual customer service metric. And I can choose from the drop down here, there's a number of pre-selected metrics that I can choose from, or I can choose other if I, if I want to, and write a description of what that additional metric is. I'm gonna go back here and go to total number of water complaints and hit next. And it's gonna ask me to put the total number of water complaints. I, again, I can actual or estimate and number of comments. Select next. And this gives me a basic review of, of what I have entered. So I can, I can take a look at what I have entered. If I have any issues with any of these numbers that are, that are coming up, I can select the back button and go back to whichever page I need to and, and make a correction. So if this all looks good to me, I'm going to hit next. And I need to certify that I have reviewed um, the contingency plan, implementing asset management, um, that my administrative contact phone numbers will guarantee a response, and that the metrics data are true and accurate to the best of my knowledge. So I will certify that. I certify that I, am, I, I consent to sign electronically. Um, there's a box here, you can sign with your, your finger if you're using a touch screen or with your mouse. You enter your printed name and your title. And today's date. select next. Now here I'm able to review everything that I have, have, have done and it will give me, I can download and view a draft PDF copy of the report. I'm going to open that just to take a look at it. And let's see here. Tells me who I am. Tells me if I've changed anything. I've changed my population 650 to or from 500, my number of service connections, my estimated LTO fee based on uh, the type of system, and um, it's either calculated through service connections, wells, or population. Um, it tells me I had no change to my owner contact or any of the information. Um, I'm removing the administrative contact because I'm replacing it. Financial contact had no changes. Um, I did have two owner contacts, so that's there. My new contact was the administrative contact, so I've added that, and there's all that, that person's information. Scroll down, and this gives me the operator record information and it shows the existing ones. 
and that I added one new operator and my distribution, I did not change anything. My signature information and this PWS operator record notification form. If you made any changes to your operators, this form does need to be submitted um, hard copy to the upsert section. So this this will need to be pay, uh, this will need to be printed. And now we have a review of the metrics, everything that I entered. Um, and any calculations. And if all of that looks good, I can close that and check that I have reviewed that application. Click Next. And now I need to submit. So I'm going to hit Submit. And I get a confirmation page that has a copy of that same form, but it's a final copy that, that shows that it was submitted. So I'm going to open that and I can save it and I will want to save it, but I'm going to open it and just verify again that it's, it's all there. Um, this is a, this is the information you want to make sure you have a copy of and you have completed the PWS LTO drop application. Do you have any questions? Um, questions regarding the, the application and the inventory information, you can contact Brian Tarver. Um, the operations sections has a uh, op opsert email and phone number, and asset management has also an email and phone number. So contact us if you if you have any questions about what was submitted. Thank you.